And here we are starting in a few seconds. We're live. Let's count it down. Does the clock have seconds? Two, one. And here we go. Welcome everyone to the November installment of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Live. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, founder of Whistlekick, guy who probably puts a little bit too much of his life out there for Whistlekick purposes, but you know what? It's what I do, so I'm going to keep doing it, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in, for their support, ongoing love that they show for this crazy ride that is Whistlekick. I want to shout out Gabe Sue for all of his help in putting together this show. Gabe's the producer for Martial Arts Radio Live. And yeah, it's this is not just me. It's not even close to just me behind the scenes. Now the first thing we gotta do, <laughs> uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open these hand warmers, because it's cold. Uh, I'm in the warehouse. And none of you have been to the warehouse because the warehouse is not worth coming to. But there's no heat in here because I don't work out here that much anymore. Uh, there's some product. You can see some things, but most of our stuff is fulfilled through our warehouse and Amazon and, and all that. So product that's here is either test product or very new product that I need to keep control over. And uh, it's like 45 degrees in here and it's a little cold. So... Um, we're gonna take these things and uh, and I'm wearing I'm I'm breaking I'm breaking kind of a rule for a lot of people. I'm wearing socks and flip flops, but they're slides. So I'm gonna put these in there. They're already warming up. It's a new batch of these things, and hopefully those will keep me warm. And that's that's why I got the that's why I got the hoodie up. We got a lot of stuff planned for you today. And of course, why are we doing this? The whole reason we're doing this is so that you can interact with the show. You can catch this later. You, there's lots of content that you can watch later on. But hopefully, in watching live, you'll engage. There's, there's, look at all these, look at all these things we're gonna talk about. Look at them all. And some of them are, most of them are designed to get your comments, your commentary. Hi, Stacy. And I just hope you do. <laughs> uh, now, where are we? Because I gotta make sure. I, I see stuff flipping through. But I've got to make sure that I, I get I get the commentary through here. Where are we? No, that's not it. That's not it. Where is it? Discussion live. Where's the live event? Hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's got, it's it's somewhere. It's in here. Uh, while I'm doing that, uh, if you haven't checked out the October episode, you can find that. It's on YouTube. It's somewhere deep in Facebook. You can also listen to an audio version. But why would you listen to an audio version of this? Hi, Leslie. Hi, Tommy. And uh, so <laughs> uh, this comment comes in from, from Louis Martin. Uh, and <laughs> Gabe, Gabe wrote this out. thought I should read it. Louis last time said, best line was, if you haven't checked out First Cup, you're missing out on me in a bathrobe sipping coffee. That was a powerful call to action there. And yeah, that's that's what's up. Hi, Andrew. Um, First Cup, weekdays, 6.30 a.m., only on YouTube. You get to watch me in a bathrobe, drinking coffee, answering questions. It's good times. Um, here's what I need. I need... Why is it not showing me the link to that? Uh, Gabe, can you throw me a link to the, the video so I can follow the chat in this, please? Um, last time, we did a poll. We're going to do another poll in a moment. But the results of the poll last time, if you could train with anyone anywhere in the world or in time, which, of course, is a question that I ask on Martial Arts Radio all the time, guess who the answer was? The top vote getter was. It was Bruce Lee. Of course it was Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee's answered every question. Really, every question. Uh, 
Frank's joining us. He says, First Cup is awesome. Frank is the producer for First Cup. Uh, like I said, I get a lot of help. I need the help. Uh, let's see. Let's drop this poll in here. So today's poll is going to be, what's the first martial arts book a new student should read? Thank you, Gabe. See, the beauty of this technology, what's the first martial arts book a new student should read? And we're posting that. That is in the discussion, the event for this thing here, uh, for this event. There we go. All right. <laughs> Chuck Norris is the answer to Bruce Lee. Love it. Um, some of you may not know, my, my first um, endeavors into television, back in college, I ran the school's TV station. And after six months, we still had no programming. So this was back, I think at the time, this is like 99, maybe 2000. Pretty sure it was 99. Uh, I lived on the air for a week. I lived in the studio. I, I think I borrowed an air mattress from somebody. And when I was not in class or eating, I was on camera. And that started what became a show called Jeremy Lesniak Live, which if I've got any college friends out there, probably remember it because Sunday night would come to a screeching halt on campus to watch the chaos that was me with this show. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that back when I had, when I, we were doing Jeremy Lesniak Live, there would be a camera person, I would be at the table, we'd have, usually Harris would be in the control booth, and one or two other people out in the, the, the green room, blue room, green room, whatever, the waiting room, I don't remember what it was called. And there was a lot going on. There were a lot of moving parts. People would come in and kind of have the same thing going on here right? Except all of the people that are involved are remote and digital. And I'm noticing because there's a delay on the gesticulation that I'm doing. Boy, my hands move around a lot. All right. Peter getting toasty. Okay. If at any time you want to comment, you want to say something, just chime in. I've, I've got all these comments here. Eric is apparently taking note of the fact that I have a dark hoodie with a, a hood up. The Diablo Assassin uh, there was something else in there I thought you... Yes. Demon Hunter. The Punisher. That's Andrews. <laughs> um, other votes for last month's poll. The one Bruce Lee won. Uh, Hanshi Toyama Kunkin. I don't know that name. Joe Lewis, Enko Itosu, Mark Shuey of Kane Masters, who's been on the show. And Sonny Chiba. Great answers. All right. First discussion question, and I want to hear you chiming in. I want to know what you think about this because that's the whole point of doing this. Can't be just me. This is from Eric, who's in the chat. Will the introduction of karate diminish or overshadow Taekwondo in 2020? What are your thoughts? I don't think we talked about this last time. If we did, well, tough. You're going to listen to it again. Okay. Karate in 2020. Taekwondo is hanging on by a thread. The majority of people that I hear talking about Taekwondo in the Olympics are ragging on it. Now, this is pretty typical of martial arts, unfortunately, where we are, uh, you know, tearing down. You know the best analogy I have for the martial arts industry as a whole? is a bucket of crabs. You ever seen a bucket of crabs? You don't have to put a top on it. You know why? Because the moment a crab tries to get out, other crabs pull it back in in their efforts to get out when it doesn't have to be like that. But yet that's what we have. Now, what I think is going to be more of an issue is the fact that we have this growing list of combat disciplines in the Olympics. We've got judo, we've got fencing, we've got boxing, we've got wrestling, we've got taekwondo, and we have karate. There is a strong case being made for bringing mixed martial arts in I could see that happening. And I just don't see that many combat disciplines working. I'm getting some commentary that the poll is not working correctly. 
Hold on, let me try something. Um, no, it did not like that. Hold on. Maybe it's gone. So, no, it just doesn't like that. All right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna post a new one. Apparently, you can't. Boom. There, that worked. All right, so you can go do that one. It is not easy to do the show and read and do all this. So, is is karate going to ruin Taekwondo? No, Taekwondo has already ruined itself. In order for any of these martial arts to really stand out, to really have uh, some staying power within the Olympics, they need to differentiate. They need to make it more exciting. Why is mixed martial arts so appealing to so many people? Because you don't have to know anything to see who's winning. If you look at the most popular sports, it tends to be very, very easy to know who is winning. Watch point sparring. It's really hard to know. Uh, watch forms. Unless you know a lot, it's hard to know. Why do a lot of people watch gymnastics or figure skating in the Olympics? It's not because they can really tell. Yeah, they have an idea. Oh, that person fell, that person didn't fall. But if you compare two really good performances, the majority of people have no idea why one wins over the other. They watch it because it's impressive. It's really cool. This is why extreme martial arts has become more popular because it's easy to watch and say, that's really cool, than watching someone do a beautiful seuchen kata. Right? I like it, but I like it because of a context that the average person does not have. Uh, Leslie says, it can be hard for the people who are judging karate tournaments to know what's going on in point sparring. Yes, that's true. I have refereed at those. I have center refereed and, and had center ref and had corner referees that I wanted to throw through windows. Eric says, any thoughts on the most recent UFC WWE mashup with The Rock and the BMF belt? I have no idea what you're talking about. I, maybe I should, but I don't. Uh, Eric, drop me a message and I'll check that out and talk about it another time. Carla says, if you had to start over, what martial art would you start with first? I feel like we talked about this, so I'm going to move on. Uh, I don't know if this is Gabe or Jenny. Thoughts on coming to class without a uniform or belt because you forgot it? I have a thought. Pretty strong thought. If you are a school where you punish people for forgetting things, you're doing it wrong. I'm going to say that unequivocally. If you punish someone for forgetting their belt or for forgetting their uniform, you're missing the point. And how many people are turning around halfway to class, not coming to train because they don't want to be punished or embarrassed? If the most important thing is them wearing that uniform or wearing that belt, you're not going to get the opportunity to teach them. You, if they are not in your class, you can't help them. And I think that that's a real shame. So here's some new questions. This one's from Andrew. Dealing with new students who already have rank. If a new student comes but already has a black belt, how should it be handled? Let them keep wearing their black belt, go back to a white belt, give them a green belt. Or what if they aren't a black belt, but still had high experience, like maybe a brown or red belt? And then what about testing? I've talked about this on the show before, and it's, there's no one way to handle this because there are so many different situations. I think it's important when anyone comes into a new school that they understand what is expected of them and how to move forward because it's done differently in different schools and I think it's even more important when 
someone comes into a school and they have a they have experience already because then they're going to have a different set of expectations. We all instinctively judge things based on what we've already experienced, our own, you know, the, the, the historical context. So if I'm coming into a school, let's, you know, any school, and I've already trained in something, it could be a very similar style, could be completely different. I'm going to default to what I already know. If I am not corrected, if I am not given the opportunity to learn experientially what is appropriate in this school, I miss out. And then I'm doing things wrong that could be seen as disrespectful, even though they're not intended to be so. There's a lot there, and there are a lot of directions you could take it. So I'm going to kind of dodge this one a little bit, but honestly, and say there's no one-size-fits-all. And it should come down to a discussion between the new student and the head instructor. And they need to have more than a two minute chat because it's about understanding what's going on. And it's about making sure everyone in the equation is getting what they need. Eric says, how about when to wear a traditional uniform versus just kicking pants and a t-shirt? How often? That entirely depends on the culture of the school. So for example, if I ran a class, if back when I had my own school, that was never acceptable. Uh, coming up in a couple weeks when we have free training day, which any of you who are within striking distance of Woodstock, Vermont, you should be coming. It's going to be an amazing day. And you can't say it's too expensive because it's zero dollars. It's free. It's literally free. There will be plenty of people training there in all manner of garb. And again, it depends on what matters there. Stacy says, I was a high blue belt where I originally trained. While I returned to Taekwondo 15 years or so later, remembering techniques, I had forgotten my patterns. I chose to start over as a white belt. But that was after a discussion with my instructor who would have let me come in retaining my rank. Yeah. Different strokes for different folks. Right? Andrew says, good answer. In both cases, when I changed schools, it was handled differently, but was communicated to me clearly. I'm not going to throw any schools under the bus. I've experienced this in different ways. I've started over as a white belt. I've kept my rank and I've kind of had, you know, something half in between where I, I started as a white belt, but was advanced very quickly. When you don't get to come up through the ranks and do everything, you miss stuff. You miss little bits. And there are some things now that within that school, I don't have. I missed because I was never a blue belt. I was never a yellow belt in these schools. Well, Gabe, hopefully next year. I mean, you can hitchhike. You can have my couch. All right, next question. Don't be afraid to drop questions and comments in there. I'll get to them. How close should an instructor be with their students? Where's the line between instructor and friend? This is a fantastic question, Andrew, thank you. If I may elaborate, Obviously, instructors are going to be more than just an acquaintance. But if you collect money from students, how close do you get? Do you try to stay slightly reserved? Go to parties at students' houses? Go out for dinner? Stuff like that? Or do you keep to yourself and never socialize outside of the dojo? <sighs> Super complex. Again, no one right answer. But when I look at this question, I look at one of the we'll call it rules for life that I've, I've kind of constructed for myself. And it's based on an observation. This observation is it is incredibly difficult and rare for any two people to maintain multiple distinct relationships. This is why it's very hard for spouses to work together. Generally, there are exceptions. But most of the time when a spouse works together, or it works with, when someone works with their spouse. There we go. Words. It doesn't work. If I'm, if I'm a martial arts student, and I, there's an instructor, right? And then I try to be peers with that instructor as friends, but yet when I'm in class, they're my superior. That can become really mus messy, muddy. I was gonna say mussy, but muddy, messy. And is it worth it? 
Now, that doesn't mean as a martial arts instructor you can't be friendly, and it doesn't mean that you can't engage with them socially. But you probably shouldn't be best friends with your students. It's really hard. It's even harder when people that you have a peer relationship with come into the school, and now all of a sudden they have to treat you differently. Does it work? Sometimes. Not the majority of the time from what I've seen. It becomes really, really hard. And I would rather see that person training somewhere else with someone else that they don't have that muddy relationship with. Because I think it's healthier for everyone involved. The job of a, a martial arts instructor is to guide, to help that person move forward and get the most out of their training and, and to better their life. And that's not always something. There's a mosquito. Go away. And that's not always something that you're going to be able to do in a friendly way. How easy is it for a parent to be friends with their children? It doesn't work too often. At least not until the child is off on their own. So that's my thought. A couple things I wanted to throw out for you. Uh, if you're not on the newsletter list, if you're not getting the newsletters, well, first off, you're missing the adventures of Master Hopkick, which are being published there and only there. So you should probably get on the newsletter list. Go to whistlekick.com, sign up. There's like seven spots over there you can do it. And I, I'm going to commit. This is going to happen. So my first real, real book, uh, The Martial Artist Handbook, is getting closer. And it is on track. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that that is out in time for Christmas and in time for gift giving and it's going to be available paperback, it's going to be available uh, Kindle, who knows where else it's going to be. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. So. Andrew says, love Hopkick. Master Hopkick's great. Once the 10 part saga is done, so many things we're going to do with that content. I'm so excited. Let's talk about uniforms. How many uniforms do you need how many should you have? Well, you need one. You only need one. But that might require frequent washing. How many should you have? As many as you need, so you're not wearing disgusting, unwashed uniforms to class. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't always re you know, wear a uniform without washing it. Because sometimes classes aren't that hard. Depends on what's going on. Sometimes you're a poor college student and it's hard to get access to the washers. <laughs> but it's a balancing act. Uh, I can't tell you how many uniforms I have. A dozen, something like that. And I, depending on the school and the style, I'm wearing different things. Hmm. Huh. I didn't just yell. I take it back. If you've seen me at competitions, if I'm refereeing, you know that there are a handful of different uniforms that I wear. It depends on the day. It depends on what I'm feeling. It depends on where I am. I would say most martial artists are probably going to need two to three if you're training two to three days a week. That's assuming you do laundry often. If you don't do laundry often, you're going to need more. There was something in here about washing. Where was that? How often should you wash your uniform in sparring gear? You should probably wash your uniform almost every time. My uniforms, 95% of the time, I come home, take it out of my bag, throw it on the washing machine. I don't sort my laundry, so I don't have to worry about that. When it's full, I wash it. Wash everything on cold. A little bit of soap. Uniforms, for the most part, get dried because they're past the point where they're gonna shrink. Uh, but I have a few that I will hang dry. And we got some comments there. Uh, Andrew says he recently bought his third uniform for his showdown test. Stacy says she has a competition uniform, two class uniforms, and testing uniform. Oh, a testing uniform. Hmm, interesting idea. Uh, yeah. And of course, the answer to washing your sparring gear, if it's something cloth-based, You've got to wash it far more often. If it's whistle kick sparring gear, 
you're probably, I don't even, no, there's some, but you know what smart gear looks like. My suggestion is wiping it down with water, hang dry, sometimes Febreze or white vinegar, a diluted white vinegar solution in a spray bottle, spray it down. If the vinegar uh, smell is not coming out as it dries, leave it in the sunlight. That'll bake that off. Easiest way to do it. Okay. And if you're smart about it, your gear won't get funky and gross and you won't end up, you know, rubbing athlete's foot or whatever all over yourself. Don't do that. That's nasty. Nobody wants that. Good question coming in from Jordan. Do you think point sparring gets the respect it deserves? I feel some tournaments treat it like a lesser event. That's a great question. And I would agree that at some events, point sparring is treated as less than. And that's because of the affinity of the people running the event. If you're a forms person putting on a tournament, you know, someone who's really passionate about forms, you're probably going to care more about forms. If you're someone who really cares about sparring, you're going to care more about sparring. This is why there's there's a... Um, I had hoped we were going to have it in 2019, but there are some plans for a sparring-only tournament that I've worked out that I just got to make it happen. Hopefully it does happen. So apparently the poll's not working. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Somehow I broke a pole. I don't know how I can do that. How do you do that? All right. A couple more questions, comments coming in. Uh, people are asking about Clorox wipes and baby wipes for sparring gear. Uh, I'm going to suggest against Clorox wipes because there is bleach in them, and bleach does degrade things. So you want to be careful there. Uh, Lessie's saying baby wipes. Uh, shout out to Lessie, who is producer. I, I forget the... the specific titles we use for everyone but i'm just going to start referring to people as producers because it's easier to remember uh lessie is producer for martial arts radio overall and helps with booking and actually just uh we're, we're giving her a little bit more responsibility because it makes my life so much easier so thank you lessie you're the best uh baby wakes will work uh i mean if it's if it's if it's safe enough to put on a baby it's probably safe enough for your sparring gear Wrenchy Craig Sargent writing in. Shout out to Wrenchy Craig and the Smart Circuit. Good friend, great guy. He's been on the show. What are your thoughts on traditional forms and open forms being grouped together at tournaments? It's tough. It can be really tough. And it requ you know you know what I think is is most important to consider there. It requires very experienced referees to understand how to score those in the same ring. Typically what I see is a dramatic misunderstanding of one or the two when they're compared. You get people that are only experienced in traditional forms and they're looking at something that's a little more creative and they either don't know what to do with it so they score it arbitrarily low or they think it's really impressive and since they can't do it, they score it arbitrarily high. And it becomes unfair. I would like to see it split more often. But of course that gets into this whole other quagmire of what constitutes a traditional form versus an open form. How much change are you permitted to make? Etc. And it gets murky. But what would help solve that is if we were willing to batch forms divisions together with more than a two or a three year age difference. If it's good enough for weapons competition, it's probably good enough for open or traditional forms competition. Something to consider. Andrew says, Jeremy, you broke the poll. You're the reason we can't have nice things. Probably am. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have this. All of this. Y'all. Tommy says, as a Kung Fu school, are there ways for my students to participate in Taekwondo and karate tournaments? Say open versus traditional. Uh, Tommy, what? Write that again, please. I'm not I'm not catching your drift. Where do we get through all this? 
Should you put patches on your uniform? If you're sub okay, here's the hierarchy of patches. If you have to put a patch on your uniform, do it if it's required by your school. So then it becomes, what if it's permitted? What are you allowed to put on? Well, most schools, I don't think I've ever known a school that lets you put any old patch on, on your uniform. Now, I've seen some that likely they do permit that because there are just way too many patches and it looks like a denim jacket from the 1980s. Yeah, I had one of those. Those were the, the best I had, like, oh, they're the orange. It was awesome. My mother probably has it somewhere. Actually, she might have mailed it to me. I might have it somewhere. If I have that, I'll try to find it for next time. To me, the purpose of a martial arts uniform is to have some standardization. That's why it's called a uniform. If something is uniform, it is the same. So the more individualization that you do, the more it pushes back against that concept. This is not to say that there isn't some wiggle room. I have... the. I have not put a patch on a uniform in a very long time. We'll leave it there. Jordan says, the Twin State martial arts patches look good. They do. Leslie says, some BJJ schools have tons of them. Patches. They look like NASCAR drivers. Sometimes it's sponsors or official patches, but some are just for decoration. Hey, we know BJJ is different, and that's okay. If it works for everybody involved, do it. Nothing wrong with it. Should you fold or hang your uniform? Yes. You should do something. I find that hanging it right after I wash it means it wrinkles less, and I hate ironing. The, the, the dream, the dream product at Whistlekick is a heavyweight wrinkle-free uniform, and someday we'll figure that out. I mean, really wrinkle-free. Not just, like, wrinkle-resistant, but wrinkle-free. Uh, the only time my uniforms are folded is when they are in my bag getting ready to go to a class or an event. Uh, yeah, it looks like you guys have that conversation handled in there. I don't need to jump in on that. I like it. The back chatter. I'll just sit here. I can just sit here and watch it. Just watch you guys talk to each other. What's your weirdest martial arts stup superstition? And if you've got some, I want to I wanna read these out loud because these are fun. I got four of them here. And I got another yawn coming. Oh. I can't have coffee because then I can't go to bed. I'm probably going to watch, at least start, V for Vendetta because it's the 5th of November. Jenny says, the night before a competition or test, I have to watch the Karate Kid. Don't we all? The day of the competition, my uniform cannot be clean. That is, I had to have worn it for class at least once before the competition or testing day. I also need to arrive wearing my personalized Black Mamba t-shirt gifted to me by my chief instructor and warm up listening to Dream Theater. But those aren't weird, right? Jenny, those are incredibly specific and good on you. Uh, yeah. Um... Leslie says she wants to beta test the wrinkle-free uniform. Oh, and can it be shrink-proof? Sure, why not? We'll make a magic uniform. Tommy says he's going to email later. I appreciate that because I, I you got something in there, and it might be good for, uh, for a Thursday episode. And Eric's asking, how do we get you to Minnesota, either a tournament or a seminar? I'm down to travel and teach seminars. The, 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 the mess of that is that it's got to cover the costs. We've got to find a way to do that. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't do several. So I, for the last couple of years, I've been talking about doing a tour. I would love to take a few weeks and travel around and teach seminars. There, there are, There's a growing body of drills that I'm finally starting to understand is kind of my niche in teaching. And it's about going slow. And I have found that working with any group of people across every style I've worked with, 
that these drills make people better. They're not magic. They're not rocket science. But they're just, it's a, it's a way of looking at things that other people don't seem to have. So if you would like to have me out to your school to run through this set of drills, let's do it. If you're more than a few hours away, then, then let's, uh, let's cover some costs. <laughs> Need the whistle kick bus. I would love the whistle kick bus. Andrew, you're right. Keene is not that far. I drove through Keene on Saturday. On the way back from an event. Jamie says, a uniform is not worth wearing unless it's had blood on it. Really, that's an old hockey superstition that carried over. I wonder how you get the blood on there the first time. Is it your own blood? I remember, <laughs> this is so gross. I remember people bleeding in class and using their belt to wipe it up. To, to show the, the battle scars because growing up in karate we didn't wash our belt and then jokes about when people got bloody noses and whether or not to use the belt to stop it up nasty here's one from the other Jenny we have two Jennies that kind of follow that are, are in, the, in the heart of things with martial arts radio uh, one is Gabe's spouse and this one's and they both spell it with an I I had one friend in my dojo who had to wear a t-shirt under his gi when competing, and it had to be inside out. Our sensei had made him flip his shirt inside out because of the graphic on it once, and he went on to win all his divisions that day. So from then on, an inside out t-shirt was a must. <laughs> now I'm being called a whistle kick Jedi. I'll take it. I've been called far worse. I've been called worse today. <laughs> I'm not seeing any superstitions. Uh, Eric says, my belt can never touch the floor. I was brought up that way, too. I guess you could consider this a superstition. I'm assuming this is Gabe. Though I don't do this anymore. At tournaments, yep, yeah, Gabe. At tournaments, I would not put on my gi top or belt until just before my divisions were called up. It was more of a psychological thing than anything else. <sighs> I know someone this weekend that did that uh, to avoid being pulled into refereeing which I can empathize with. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm at an event, if I'm going to compete, which doesn't happen very often, I need a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of space, especially brain space, to get ready to compete. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. I'm not going to be able to do my best. Uh, anything here? Things like... Oh, okay. We're back. Here's another question. Good one. Stacy says, I totally agree. I prefer to tie mine off when not being, when not using it. Signifies its energy is at rest. I'm talking about belts. There's a lot about belts. Belts are, belts are so interesting. Um, did an episode called Paradox, The Paradox of Rank. And in there, if I remember correctly, talked a little bit about the, the contrasting attitudes towards belts. You know, on, on the one hand, it's a piece of cloth that just kind of, sits there around your waist. It doesn't even literally hold your pants up. It's the only kind of belt we wear that doesn't do anything. It is purely decorative. And yet, we treasure it. it, it we, we have all these attitudes and reverence for it. Honestly, if I had to save one thing if this place was burning down outside of the cat, it would be my belt. I would save it before anything else, and yet it's on, on the list of expensive things. It's so far down the list, but that's because it's irreplaceable. I've had it for over 24 years. It's my belt. It's the only one I need. It's starting to get worn. It's kind of frayed in there. I'm a little nervous about what's going to happen if it... If it rips, I watched my uh, one of my first karate teachers, uh, Shihan Beth, who was on the show not too long ago. She was tightening her belt. Ch -ch -ch. A chunk of it came off in her hand. She looked, I don't know what to do. She sewed it back together. And I think that's the belt she's still wearing. It has it has worn through to the point where you can see the fabric underneath. It's, it's really cool. 
If you could be host of the Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio podcast for one episode, what would you talk about and or who would you interview? Stacy says, I want to shout out Stacy and Laura, the sometimes forgotten, though not in my heart, uh, Team Smashy Smash, breaking team, that the two of you just, you're killing it. Really, really proud of all the work the two of you are putting in. So this one's from her. Weapons that aren't bow, sigh, or swords. And personally, though he's been interviewed, Terrence Webster Doyle and Ken Goodrich, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Eric says he always have to has to watch Mortal Kombat before a tournament. And Gabe says, should you ever buy a new black belt? If you want to. See, because there are such different and contrasting, sometimes contradictory attitudes towards rank and belts, to say that you have to or should do one thing versus another, it's to me, that's arrogant. I know people that get a new belt every time they are promoted. Cool. I know people like me who have no stripes on their belt and just wear what they have. And then there are other people, you know, Tommy in the chat even mentioned this earlier that sometimes he teaches without wearing his Kung Fu sash. Whatever works. Whatever checks your boxes, right? All we're trying to do is move forward. We're trying to get better. We're trying to help other people get better. What is, does it matter? It only matters if it matters to you. Stefan or Stefan? I'm guessing Stefan by the spelling. Sandberg. I would want to talk about Ryukyu. I've heard that pronounced a couple different ways. My apologies if I'm getting it wrong. Kabuto. And I think I would want to start with Andreas Quast Sensei. I would like to talk about the history surrounding the art, the masters who made it, and the styles that have been produced, as well as the link to karate from all times to today. There's a lot in that history stuff. Uh, Jesse Einkamp, who's been on the show, has done some great stuff with Okinawan Masters. There's a lot of great stuff out there if you if you want to get into history and lineage, and especially Japanese Okinawan stuff. If you want to get into history of Taekwondo, A Killing Art is a great place to start. Um, and then there are a seemingly an infinite number of texts on old school Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Bagua, etc. Lots of books out there. And there are lots of people who say they know stuff. Whether or not they do, I don't know. Not my place to judge. I just present and share. CJ says, I would want to talk about where respect for the arts and rank went. Not rank for a belt, but for what was earned. Hmm. Sounds like CJ has an axe to grind. And I'm not saying I disagree. CJ, I'd love to know more about what your thoughts are there. Maybe we should have a conversation. Maybe you'll come on the show and we can talk about this. Because I like talking about martial arts related subjects with people that are passionate about those subjects. Mm. Eric says, you only replace your belt if it frays. Yeah, so there's another example. I'm sure in some schools having a frayed belt is seen as... kind of lazy that not getting the right word but like if your uniform is frayed and dirty and just wouldn't look right but for some reason a frayed belt is I don't know to me it is we're going to do some trivia we're not going to do any giveaways we're not doing any sales tonight oh, it's already quarter we're not going to do anything like that because last time that just I want to get there, but we don't have enough people watching that it did anything. I, mean, I want to build this up, and I want to build this up authentically. But if I spend all my time talking about go buy this and whatever, and nobody's buying it, it's, it's wasteful. What I'd love to do is get to a point where we have like a limited edition shirt or something 
but that's going to require more resources and something that I'm not going to do this something I'm not going to do right now we'll build the show Eric says fun fact Ernie Reyes Jr. is training UFC fighter Nate Diaz I didn't know that that's super cool big fan big fan of Ernie and the Reyes family so here's some trivia just for fun what was the first color of sparring gear Whistlekick produced? Here's a hint. If you look closely, you can see the answer in this shot. <laughs> uh, fun fact, this right here, uh, this poster is a blow up of a... some. Um, Black Belt Magazine blurb in their, what do they call it, essential gear section of the magazine uh, before Century bought it, of course, uh, where they featured whistle kick gear. Uh, Eric, foot is not a color. <laughs> Black is a color. Yes. Carla, Stacy, you guys got it. Andrew, you got it. <laughs> Eric, I'm going to give you a hard time about that one, my friend. Where's the whistle kick gear, the whistle kick warehouse? We're not going to call it just a gear warehouse. Where's the whistle kick warehouse located? Yes, it's backwards. Every, everything in the shot is probably backwards because I'm using the, this facing camera so I can make sure I'm in, I'm in frame. Where's that warehouse located? Who knows that? Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> Eric is leaving the chat. <laughs> Don't go. Don't go. That was fun. Uh, no, it is not in Vermont. Stacy says Texas. Carla says Vermont. So th when I talk about the warehouse, this, this is generally what I'm talking about. But th technically, this is not it. The warehouse that holds the majority of our product, you know, 95% of what we've got, is in Texas. And... That's because of the logistics of things going across the country and where things are coming in and where our product comes from. It made more sense to hold it there. Because here's the thing. Shipping things to Vermont is expensive. And we took the money that it cost to ship things here. And in instead, we shipped them to Texas. And there's a nice company down there that holds our inventory and packs our boxes and sends stuff to Amazon and very nice people. Very happy with them. Yeah. Texas does the distribution. What caused a major interruption for Whistlekick back in 2017? Was it really that long ago? Oh, man. <sighs> August of 2017. It was a horrible day, which turned into a horrible week, which really became like a horrible, it was like, it was like a year. It was an awful year. Ugh. I hated it. We'll see if anybody gets that. How old was I when I started training martial arts? I don't think you guys like the trivia. Doesn't doesn't seem to be your jam. That's okay. Gabe's taking notes. We might not do trivia. Or maybe we'll spread it out. Have I caught up from from that? From the horrible thing? The major interruption? I was four when I started training. Yes, let's see. Uh, no, it wasn't a fire in production. Um, wait a couple more guesses. And, okay. Uh, Hurricane Harvey. So, the original 
distribution warehouse for Whistlecake was also in Texas, but a different one. And it was on the coast. And if you remember when Hurricane Harvey was all over the news and flooding Houston, there was all this water and there was this discussion of Hurricane Harvey made landfall in South Texas in this small town that I can't even remember the name of now. Oh man, that's embarrassing. It'll come to me. I'll look this up because it's going to drive me nuts. So Harvey made landfall in this little town in South Texas. Guess where the warehouse was? Right there. Little town near Corpus Christi called Rockport. There it is. Rockport, Texas. Like a month prior, the company that was storing everything moved to a new facility. The facility they were in was leveled, completely decimated. They sent me pictures. If they had not moved, I would have lost 100% of my inventory. Now, miraculously, the new building they moved into despite being condemned, suffered no real damage. The foundation cracked. And FEMA said, you got to get out. And they had to get out anyway because there was no power or water. It was awful. Now, I'm not going to go into the, the nitty-gritty of what happened and inventory being shipped back and forth in the southwest of the United States, but I'm thankful for the partners that we have now. And... It's led to, I mean, I, I've often given this advice to new entrepreneurs. Make a list of all of the things that could go wrong, no matter how ridiculous they are, and then come up with a disaster plan for each of them. Because you will deal with things that you would never expect, whether that's lawsuits or uh, weather events or theft. I, I've, I've experienced some horrendous things in my professional career. And it's just part of the game it's what you got to do Where are we? here we are so yeah yeah this whole manufacturing thing is not easy but you figure it out you learn you move forward so what else can you do in terms of product, um, I don't know that it's going to happen in time for Christmas. We're like right on the fence, but hoping to have a new production run of some foam gear. Uh, the new Taekwondo pullover style uniforms should be in long before Christmas. Um, and I think that's the only new product that's going to hit. Now on the apparel side, there's a whole bunch of Christmas stuff that we're doing. Working on the first Whistlekick ugly Christmas sweater. It's going to be a sweatshirt, but ugly Christmas sweatshirt. Uh, Merry Kickmas t-shirts. Those are all ready to go. This stuff isn't going to go live in, for a little while. Uh, and then there are a handful of other products. Some will be limited time only, some not on the apparel side. Trying to make sure you guys have options. If I can't bring you all the uniforms and gear and everything that I want to bring, I'll bring you other stuff. You do what you got to do. You do what you can do. Do what you can with what you have where you are. What, else, what, other, what other option is there, right? What else is coming down the pipe? Um, we're like... A month back on episodes, just recorded another one today. It was great. Came out actually came out really well. Really happy with it. Uh, and I think the last thing I want to say, as, I'm, as as we start winding down here, is just thank you. You know this this 
whole live thing is only possible because of the skills that I'm developing doing First Cup. And this show will keep getting better. We'll, we'll keep adjusting it. If you go back to the beginning days of martial arts radio and listen to the early episodes, I didn't know what I was doing. Go listen to the first Thursday episode. It was horrible. Episode like 37, 39, 38, somewhere in there. No, I think 39, 37, 39, 30, whatever it was. It was back then. And I was trying to make it all segment-based. And it was like news and quotes. And it was just, it was rough. And that ultimately just spun into the Thursday shows we do now, which are just, it's a grab bag. It's whatever it is. But instead of trying to put too many things in at once, it's just one thing. And so that's what we do. Thank you, Gabe. So we, I want feedback. We want advice. How do we make this show what you want it to be? What I want to build a show that is so compelling that you mark it on your calendar. That you know the first Tuesday of every month, Martial Arts Radio is going live, and you don't want to miss it. How do I do that? So your feedback helps us get there. And Gabe will do whatever it takes to make that happen. Right? Right, Gabe? <laughs> so. That's all I got. I'm not going to arbitrarily go to 9 o'clock if there's nothing else to say. So just thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting Sign up for the newsletter. Get ready for the book. Oh, well, thank you, Craig. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. It's a lot more fun for me to engage with people when there's conversation. That's one of the things I have a hard, really hard time with on the Thursday episodes. If, if it's just me rambling or ranting, I don't know what to say. And interestingly, people have observed, and you can check this out. You can listen. My voice is different when I'm talking to someone versus when I'm talking to myself. So I'm going to go. I'll see you next month. And I hope to hear from many of you. Heck, all of you. And there's another episode coming on Thursday. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great night. Peace.